Okay. You are part of Rajakacharya. <laughs> no, Maharaj. I'm just trying to start you, Maharaj. Thank you for joining us, giving us the honor of having your association. <laughs> yeah, some devotees. It's for you. Haribo, devotees. <laughs> This is our Santa Krishna Prabhu Pujari okay. and Muni Maharaj and Murari Prabhu Haribo. and that side is Gadadha. Yeah. Very auspicious. So much auspicious association. We, are, we had a program in Calcutta and then we are returning back. Now we may reach around night one o'clock to our Martin Navati. Oh. <laughs> That's why it's so dark there, huh? <laughs> no, Maharaj, actually this is in the vehicle, no? Okay. So the driver may face some problem if we uh, switch on the light and drive him. Okay. How are you feeling, Maharaj? I'm okay, Maharaj. Yes, feeling good today. Maharaj, we just had a nice talk with Pratyumna Prabhu about the book. Oh, what do what you say? Uh, it's there on Facebook. Um, he was asking some introductory questions uh, about the first chapter. Okay. Um, he asked... What question do you He asked, what does it refer to uh, when the book is saying that scientists apply the same logic to mechanical, chemical, and biological systems? That was his first question. Just to clarify that. And then the last question was, what does it mean when we talk about Hegel and his idea of the concept and it being a unity and multiplicity and how that's relevant to the rest of the book uh, or the chapter? Yes. Yes. So he was satisfied? Yes, he seemed. You're not coming to I think so. <clears throat> any other any other devotees joined? Uh, well, today was just a discussion between Pradyum and I, but tomorrow we'll have a big group discussion on Zoom. Hopefully, people will come. Okay. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> All right. That is Yes. Dr. Ross has joined us. And who? Aditi Nandan Prabhu. Haribo, Dandavan. I don't think you know Linda. Dr. Linda. She's from Princeton. She's also. Linda, Linda I, met, I met her. No. I don't think so. She's from UK? She's, no, not no she's from the US. She's from Linda. Is a student, yes. I think, a student at the uh, Princeton, Princeton, okay. Princeton University, maybe. Yeah, she's, a, she's a student there. She's uh, um, working a, there. Research fellow. Research. Okay. Very nice devotee. Yeah. She comes often to our sanghas, and sometimes she comes to the Princeton. She met Krishna Kesava Prabhu. She met yes, Prabhu and Amiya Sindhu. And Ross from where? Uh, Ross is now in Michigan. He's working with All the right. scientists. He's working with the scientists in Michigan. <laughs> okay. Let's see. He goes from place to place. <laughs> Doctor Sahu joins sometime. Doctor Sahu. Sahu, I haven't seen her in a few weeks. 
I don't know what happened. Uh, Oma Davies is usually here, but she's not here today. Yeah. Dr. Ross, did you meet Dr. Maharaj already? Have you seen him? Only briefly on Zoom one time. Oh, uh, Zoom, okay. Amiya Sindhu, Haribo, Dandavat. Shant Maharaj is your traveling, Maharaj? Yes. She's asking if Shanta Maharaj is traveling. Oh. I am I am going to Bangalore on 22nd night. 22nd of this night month? I will reach. Yes, yes. This month, uh, one Didi, she is uh, Tungabidya Didi. Her uh, no. operation may be there in Narayana Hospital in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, I have to come back. So uh, let's see if we have time at the time, so we can have some program in Mysore. Yes, but I will be alone, yes. you know. I will be alone um, ah. because other devotees may not be able to travel. So I may have to come mm -hmm. alone. Okay. Yeah. By then, our college would have started also. I will find out. If time, if time permits only, we'll see, okay? Okay, Maharaj. Fine. Which which date you are going, Maharaj? So I was in Cal Calcutta, so I'm returning back to Navadip. We are on the way. Just now we finished the program. We had some prasadam, but we'll yeah. reach little late today, at one 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 a.m. Mysore is telling the Bangalore is likely to come on 22nd. I could not hear. No, you are coming to 2nd May, Maharaj, where, when you are going to Mysore? Oh, no, no, not Mysore. I am going to Bangalore. Bangalore. On 21st, I am starting from Calcutta. So, mm. 22 or maybe midnight, 2 a.m., I will be reaching there. So, we are like uh, three, de uh, four devotees going. When when will you go to Bangalore? Twenty second. Twenty second. Twenty first. Twenty first. We have the train in Maharaj. Twenty okay. first of this month. So we will be reaching on twenty second late night. It is twenty third actually. Okay. <clears throat> For Tunga Vidya's operation. Hmm? For Tunga Vidya Didi's heart operation, finally. Oh. In Bangalore at the hospital. Hmm. So I, I will be muting Maharaj because we are on the car, some background noise will be there. But I will be listening. Oh, thank you, Maharaj. Tandava. Andhwar Maharaj, Andhwar, Ted Kurni, Amya Sindhu, Hare Krishna, Andhwar Maharaj. Your health is okay? How wonderful to see you, Maharaj. Absolutely, with your grace and mercy, Andhwar. Ted Kurni, pay attention to the role, Maharaj. Andhwar, Andhwar. Andhwar, Andhwar. Okay. I have one question. Uh, regarding the institute, Maharaj. Yes. Uh, this Bhakti Vedanta Institute, what is the course it has got to offer? Does it offer any course to philosophy students? Offering course? And if, does it offer any formal course? Not, not formal courses, no. 
Not formal courses. No, we're waiting for you to come here that we can have. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, you know, your uh, all the students are crazy to go abroad and do studies and internships and add this and all. So they're just after going to foreign countries. Uh, so I was just, that's why I'm asking, do you have any course? Do you offer any certificate? I can ask them to do online courses, something, and then some part of Krishna consciousness also can be put on to them yes. from your side. Yes. Krishna Kesava is not offering a course, but he's tell, telling about the book uh, and giving some, some ideas about our book, you know, the, uh, <laughs> that yeah, this book also has a question. Uh, Maharaj, your book, what you wrote, I will uh, stop the mind, that book I have uh, it. I want to know that this book, uh, uh, is it on, uh, like, can I acquire this for my college library? Okay. Uh, indent and uh, get it from there, I can get it. Didi, it's on Amazon. You can order from Amazon in India. Huh. I can invent and get it to my college library. I'm planning to do so, so that the students can read that. Yes, on, on Amazon.in. Uh, if you type in the huh. name of the book, it will be there. It can be shipped to you. Okay. I'll do that too. And uh, Maharaj, one more important, uh, one more question I have in mind. Can okay. I ask now? She's asking if she can ask the question. Yes, ma'am, did he please? Yeah, this is regarding the consciousness, like uh, uh, in one of the book uh, I've read from Prabhupada uh, <clears throat> Parpur, consciousness is nothing but symptoms of the soul. And uh, if that is the case, like uh, what is the, like there will be so many different types of consciousness, you know, like uh, maybe some uh, children, children also have consciousness or uh, I'm talking about baby, uh, that is, uh, and uh, mentally retarded people, uh, what is this consciousness uh, in those aspects? Huh? She's asking if consciousness is the symptom of the soul, uh, when consciousness is expressed in so many different forms, <clears throat> whether adult or a baby, or even someone who is mentally ill, mm -hmm. what does that mean about the soul if consciousness is the symptom of the soul? Yeah. Uh, yes. Spirit uh, has many varieties of forms. You know, Krishna is called Anantarup. Huh? You know that? Anantarup. Sometimes he comes as Kurva, sometimes as Raha, Nishinga. These are all uh, Rupas, groups of uh, uh, Krishna. Huh? But he has Anantarup. Means even insects are there. Uh, insect is a root also, has a consciousness. <clears throat> oh, from the, from the uh, smallest, uh, what is that Indragopa. Indragopa. Indragopa, huh? You know the Indragopa dimensions, from the smallest entity, living entity, to Brahma. All are different expressions, rupas, of consciousness. So that is the infinite variety of spirit, the infinite forms of spirit of Krishna. Huh? Krishna appears as a human, but he also appears in all the other forms. So he's not limited, and consciousness is not limited to only one expression. They can express in many ways. We can even say the material world is the form of consciousness in a sleeping state. Uh, some people call matter sleeping consciousness. Uh, just as uh, 
Mahavishnu, huh? who begins the whole material manifestation, the whole uh, production of the universe is in the Karnadakshay Ocean. Karnadakshay Ocean, that, that Mahavishnu is in Yoga Nidra, they call Yoga Nidra, is sleeping. And from him, in that sleeping condition, the worlds are coming. So the worlds are part of that sleeping consciousness. The world means the inanimate world, huh? That is part of the sleeping consciousness. But there's also other forms of Vishnu. Mahavishnu, then uh, Gabadaksha Vishnu, then Shiradaksha Vishnu. So this, these indicate the, the material world, the, the, the living entities, huh? And uh, like that, the spiritual world. So consciousness can come in these varieties of forms. And that's all, that's all these living entities represent, all these different forms of consciousness. Some are, high, some are more awake, some are more asleep, uh, just like human being. Now that's a very special form of consciousness because in the human form of life, we can understand what is, what is our spiritual nature, what is the full 100% consciousness or Krishna consciousness. We can awaken to that in the human form of life. Not the other forms, they don't have that capacity. They're too weak uh, uh, spiritually to understand. But when we come to the human form, then we have the possibility of understanding what is our real spiritual nature beyond mere material or natural conditions of life. Uh, living entities are all, uh, below human beings are also conscious, but they're not conscious of their spiritual nature. They can't hear Krishna Kata. They can hear, but they can't understand Krishna Kata. Huh? But the human being can understand and he can try to uh, elevate his consciousness to that platform of where he knows himself to be a spirit, a spiritual being. Huh? Uh, Brahma Bhuta. Brahmabhuta Prasanatma, as it is described in the Bhagavad Gita. Brahmabhuta means the spiritual being, uh, spiritual entity. Living entity uh, and this human form of life can understand that. Therefore, human form is the most important form of life uh, because we have the capacity to uh, change uh, our identification with nature to spirit. We're not just natural beings, we're spiritual beings. Uh, we have a relationship with Krishna in the higher world, in the higher conscious world. Um, so I, I call it degree or percentage. Uh, in the material platform, that's zero degrees. Uh, zero degrees consciousness. <laughs> Then we can go higher or lower. A human form of life is coming to 50% consciousness. Then when we understand our spiritual nature, then it becomes more than 50%. I like that. I know Govinda Maharaj used to talk about some people are 50 or 5% Krishna conscious, mm -hmm. some people 10%, some people 50%, <laughs> like that. Mm -hmm. So depending on how much we become conscious of our genuine spiritual existence, that will determine the perfection of our development, evolution of consciousness. Uh, so this book we are reading, the Prapanna Jivanamita, is to explain that consciousness in its higher form. Okay? In order to get beyond the, the just the, the natural consciousness and consciousness of being a material being, to get beyond that, we have to cross that river that separates the material and spiritual world. Do you know that river? What it's called? There's a river. Viraja Maharaj. Yes. The Viraja River that is separating the material and spiritual world. What does that Viraja mean? Viraja means renunciation. Huh? In order to get from the free from material nature, we have to renounce the material nature. That's called Viroja, Viraja. But that's not enough. 
that will get us to the Roja River. But how do you go beyond that to the higher world, the world of spirit, huh? the world of dedication, of service, of devotion, of love? How do we get to that world? Uh, yes, we have to renounce the, the, our exploitation mentality, exploitive mentality that keeps us in the material conception, the material consciousness of life. We have to renounce that. But how do we positively enter into the higher plane of devotion, of dedication, the world of dedication, mm -hmm. bhakti? How do we enter that world? From the Viroja River, the only way you can get there is through the gate of Sharanagati, the gates of surrender. In order to get to Vaikuntha planets and above, we have to enter through the gate of surrender, Sharanagati. And that's what this book explains. How to get through that gate. Where is that gate and how to get through? Sharanagati means surrender. You can't get there without surrender. Your spiritual life begins only with when you get through that gate. Huh? That is a that is a thing. You know when Jai and Vijay were, got, were guarding the gates of Aikunta, huh? You know that story? Those gates, that is the gate of Sharanagati, a gate to enter into Vishnu and then hire the Loka Krishna. And that means that it, uh, surrender. We have to surrender and then we have to learn how to serve in that world, how to awaken our dedicating spirit, our desire to serve and to love Krishna and to uh, have a happy life with him, uh, of satisfying him and not satisfying our own selfish pleasure. And that is the process. Uh, so these are different levels of consciousness. Now, human human form of consciousness, they can have the cap capacity for understanding these things. They have the capacity to uh, withdraw their attention from the enjoying world, exploitive world, and, and direct it toward the serving world. Uh, but they have to make that uh, choice themselves. They have to make that conscious decision within themselves. And then they have to learn how to uh, come to that higher position by the grace of Guru and, and Goranga, by the grace of the Shastra and the Sadhus. We can learn those things and how to direct all of our feelings and desires so that we uh, go in that direction. Uh, and uh, the Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, huh? we have this uh, every Saturday, is meant to give us some association. Sangha means association, connection. Uh, sadhu Sangha. We connect with Sadhu, with those who are aspiring for those higher planes of reality, of consciousness. Uh, keep association with them. Then we will also get some, uh, something will rub off on us. Uh, and we will learn how to come to that higher planes. If we associate only with materialistic persons, then that affects us and we become conditioned by them. Uh, but if we associate with those who are beyond that stage and want to uh, cultivate their life in the spiritual dimension, and then we will also get benefit from associating with them. Uh, a man is known by the company he keeps, they say, right? A person is known by the company they keep. So you associate with materialists, you know that you are materialists. You are becoming materialists also, or staying in that position. And if you start associate with the devotees, then you will become devotees. By, just by association, uh, if possible. <laughs> it will help, be helpful to us at least. But we have to also accept that within ourselves. Uh, within our own hearts. Hare Krishna. Is it okay? Is it okay? They vote to Diddy? Did I answer the question properly? Yeah, I got the concept. A little, say, to understand, I got, I read some of what you said. You said, 
that consciousness level is going to be different levels. And we have to raise that consciousness level from the material towards the Krishna consciousness. And the book, what we are reading, is what it is going to take us to us. First thing is we have to cross the river, that means renounce it. And after renouncing or everything, we need to get, uh, get into Sharnagati more and do the service. Renouncing, that uh, doesn't mean you have to go through that process of renouncing. Of course, we have to give up all the material uh, inclinations, uh, inclination to enjoy materially. But in the devotional process, that is not stressed so much as learning how to serve, dedication. Uh, the idea in, in, the, in, in, in the devotional platform is that by using your senses for service, they automatically become transferred from the exploitive platform to the devotional platform. Uh, that will automatically happen. Just by gauging your senses in devotion, by worshiping the deity, by honoring the devotees, by offering your food and taking prasad, all these processes will automatically help us detach from the material activities. I mean, people in the material world, they also eat. They also worship different things, huh? material movie stars or politicians or whatever. Huh? So if they can change that uh, desire of worshiping those material things to the desire for serving Krishna, then automatically the renunciation will occur. We don't have to make a separate effort for that. Just like, uh, you know, in, in the Western countries, people were, were, were uh, addicted. Uh, Westerners are addicted to eating meat uh, and uh, taking different drugs and things like that, uh, having sex, and all these things that lead to a more uh, fallen material position, they're used to all those things. And when Prabhupada came, he said, you have to give up all those things. No meat, no sex, no uh, drugs, you know, all these things he said you can't do. And then what are the devotees to do? So he said, here, you take this Simply wonderful, this sweet, <laughs> and you, this you, this will satisfy your need to eat nice things, and you will give up the other things because they don't taste as good. Whoever eats prasadam, they get something happens to them. They internally they change. Uh -huh. Their taste becomes elevated. The higher taste. And then the lower taste is given off, just like the example is given. When the child has something in his hand, you can't take it away so easily. But if you give him something that he likes, some sweet or something like that, he'll be immediately put that down and he'll take what you're offering him. So this is called uh, Yukta Vairagya. Yukta Vairagya. Yukta Vairagya is the process we apply, we apply, we use yukta vairagya. Yukta vairagya, yukta means connection and vairagya means renunciation. So yukta, by engaging in the higher activities of the worship of the deity, the honoring of the devotees, the taking uh, an offering of Mahaprasad, we get a higher taste, yukta. We, we, we unite with the higher things, the spiritual things, and then vairagya, that renunciation of the material things comes naturally, uh, automatically, spontaneously. So that's the idea, huh? is yukta vairagya, okay? So renunciation is not considered a separate step because you really can't renounce until you have a higher thing to do to uh, attach to. We are by nature, consciousness is the platform of attachment. 
whoever is, it, is conscious, they are attached to something. They have desire. Uh, you can't be conscious without desire. Can't be, you can't be a, a conscious person it has to be attached to something. It means the conscious means desire because to be conscious means to pay attention to something. And we only pay attention to what we're interested in, what we have an interest in. You can't be conscious unless you have an interest in that thing, attention, as a natural form. An actual symptom of consciousness is attachment. Uh, so without directing our attachment, without developing our attachment to the higher things, then it won't be possible to give up anything lower. Uh, so it's very important how to cultivate those things which uh, engage our our. Uh, character of uh, of being attached to things. Engage those qualities that desire in the higher plane. Otherwise, the, the material things will not become um, diminished in our life. So it's a process. Bhakti yoga is a process. Process of, of directing our desires in the higher world and away from renouncing the material world, it's automatically included. We don't have to make a separate endeavor for that. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. This, this idea, yukta vayagya, is very important. Huh? You know the meaning of that in Sanskrit? Yukta vayagya. Yeah, just now you said that it's connection. Uh, yukta means connection. Vairagya means renunciation of material. Yukta. Uh -huh. She connection said, like, like you told, the yukta means connection, and vairagya means renunciation uh -huh. to, to give up. Uh -huh. Yukta or yoga. Yukta vairagya. Yukta means like yoga connection. Uh -huh. But that connection has to be with the higher thing. Yukta with the higher end, the spiritual world. Okay. Any other questions? No question, Maharaj, but May I say, thank you very much for your explanation. You have a wonderful way of making the most complex of things that happens around into most wonderfully, how should I say, intellectually edible. <laughs> uh, thank you, Maharaj. Dandavad, I am at your mercy and grace. Thank you, Dandavad, Maharaj. Okay. Maharaj, can you hear me? Yes, Maharaj, we can hear you. Okay, Maharaj. Maharaj, I was asking this Saranagati, where it comes in the sloka, Adho Sadha Tata Sadhu Sangha. Saranagati. Well, I think Shraddha, Ado Shraddha is the first qualification, huh? Before we can uh, begin the process of spiritual life. So Shraddha, faith. If you put your faith in something, then your, your uh, surrender is automatically there. Huh? Faith means you don't, you trust that what you are putting your faith in. You have complete confidence, trust. Uh, so faith doesn't just mean faith in general. 
Faith actually means faith in the sadhu, because it says ado shoda tata sadhu song. So faith must be in the sadhu, yeah. an association with the sadhus. As soon as we make that uh, connection, faith, we trust the sadhu. Mm -hmm. We are putting our confidence, huh? uh, uh, we are submitting ourselves. That's uh, uh, in that sense, it is is uh, huh? And especially when we accept sadhu, that particular sadhu, as our, our spiritual master, and we vow to be obedient, to carry out the instructions of the spiritual master, uh, then a mutual trust. Master. I'm sorry? A mutual trust. A mutual trust. trust. So incredible. Well, not, not so much mutual, but we have to put our trust. The Gurudev is trusting we are sincere, but he's hoping we are sincere. Indeed, indeed, indeed. He is the teacher, he is the master, and we are the we are the shisha, we are the student. Uh -huh. But we have to be willing to hear to see what the spiritual master says. Huh? We have to be willing to take instruction. This is the problem I, I find with myself and with most people. Uh, the instruction is being given, but do we follow? I remember Acharya Maharaj always used to say that. Uh, that you, we are singing these songs, uh, Sri Guru Pradana Padma, uh, Guru Mukya, that I am hearing the words of Guru and I must follow. We're singing that, but actually, are we doing that? <laughs> so easy to sing, easy to say. And all these nice songs, bhajan. But to actually do that, put it into practice, really convert our heart huh? into understanding that we are not the controller, we are not the independent uh, controller of everything. Now following my mind, that is worship of myself. If I only follow what my mind tells me, it means I worship myself as God. And Mayavad. Mayavads don't have this idea of uh, Vaishnava association. Uh, in, in Vaishnavism, we find the part of the principle of association, Sangha, to be most important. Yeah, why, why do you think they can do everything on their own? I have my mind. I just have to follow wherever that leads me. And when I become satisfied that that's it, that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for anything else. I'm not looking for anything like surrender to somebody else. Uh, that would be my up for that. Our idea is that others, uh, especially Guru Dave, they have some uh, importance in our life. That there is no, they're not a, 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 there's not an emptiness. Spiritual life doesn't mean emptiness. Uh, that we have, you know, access only to our own thoughts and whatever. Meditation, solitary. Maharaj? Solitary. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, Maharaj? Maharaj, is this uh, to something to do with bhajana kriya, the 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 way the, you know the surrender as you explained, it is there in the bhajana kriya, Maharaj, when the sadhu is you know instructing or the uh, person who has faith, he is uh, mm, I mean so trying to serve. So uh -huh. is that uh, he is learning to surrender there? Bhajana kriya that means means us. Uh, Worshipful service, Ajana Kriya, activity of worship. Huh? Yes, that is that means we carry out the service activities, Ajana Kriya. Uh, you can say that also requires Sharanagati, but I think both, you know, are, are essential. Faith, birth must be first. Ado, Shraddha, it says Ado, but that faith, like I said, requires also. That we must have 
a willingness at least to surrender. You can say, yes, the willingness is there in the struggle, but then the actual carrying out of that will is bhajana kriya. It's actually doing the service under the, under the guidance of Guru. Adho shraddha tata sadhu sangha ta bhajana kriya. And then it comes on earth and everything. Then comes our unwillingness to serve. <laughs> The narthas, the things that uh, hold us back from giving our hearts fully in service, that come, anartha. And as we engage in service, we'll find what unwillingness we have, un a disobedience uh, that, that uh, may influence us, and we have to give that up. Maharaj, what do you, uh, I take your instruction, what do you say? <laughs> Maharaj, I, I was just, you know, uh, thinking about the Saranagati is not uh, explicitly mentioned there. I think once you told, as, as far as I remember, that uh, the Saranagati is much before uh, the Shraddha. Saranagati is before Shraddha? Yes. To what do we surrender then? Um, the energy of our consciousness? No. Trinagati has nothing to do with our or mine. Understand the other. There's something other than myself. That's Saranagati. A will other than my own. That um, Bhagavatam also Maharaj, it begins with, uh, means that uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya from there. So, in the process of uh, surrender is uh, coming to sadhu means uh, already he has some you know understanding of uh, saranagati must be there because you see even in mahaprabhu when he to asked uh, this um, rai ramananda then he told that you know sarva dharman parityajya mamekam saranam braja so that he told as you know something external So, so that maybe that oh, there are different types that's, of surrender. Uh, surrender. But he's telling in that in that sloka, he's telling to tiag. He's telling Sarvadaman for tiaga. Huh? So he's telling them to renounce his dharma. Now that's a preconceptual, preconceptual consciousness that you have to renounce. That is the first, like we were saying, that renunciation is necessary in order to uh, you would find any, uh, any desire to want to not come to the spiritual platform. Uh, so Mahaprabhu told that's out external because you have to renounce. I think the concept of renunciation is there. Yeah. But in the higher conception, that Yukta Vairagya, the Tyagya comes naturally, huh? spontaneously, once the devotional activities have been taken up. So Mahaprabhu told Ramananda Roy that real spiritual life begins with meeting the devotee, huh? Sadhu Sang. I don't remember the exact quote. Mahaprabhu Bhakta Ganer. Aras, can you hear me? Yes. Mahaprabhu Bhakta Ganer, Vairagya Pradhan, Taku Dekhe Prasanna Hansi Gaurav Bhagavan. 
means the prime quality of uh, mahaprabhu's devotee is the bairagya and seeing that uh, mahaprabhu is very pleased mm -hmm. and in that way he is of course indicating the jukta bairagya but uh, just this uh, sloka may not people those who don't understand jukta bairagya may think that you know this is something to do with you know mere renunciation yes well that's why there are different types of instructions for people at different levels of awareness uh, those who are in need of the scriptural injunctions they are at a different level than those who understand the need of a, a spiritual guide uh, the scriptures are start, serve as a spiritual guide but they are more general uh, for the general population and not so specific for the individual when an individual is really interested in making advancement in spiritual life, they come to the spiritual master. They don't simply rely on the scripture. And they even give up any trust or confidence only in the scripture. And they're ready to take whatever spiritual master as good as the scripture or better, knowing that the scriptures are there for the general population, uh, for those who have not come to a more developed stage of spiritual interest, huh? spiritual eagerness. So sometimes if we read in the scripture, we become misled of what is what. Therefore, we need the instruction of Guru to tell us what is meant by that. Prabhupada used to give the example that uh, stool is considered impure. But in the scriptures it says cow dung is pure. <laughs> so and people may become confused. Well, what is it? <laughs> pure or impure? Uh, so spiritual master is needed to to uh, explain these things to us. We will find otherwise we'll find contradictory information also in the scripture. And that is not the highest realization only to say from scripture. In fact, in this book, Prabhupada Jiva Namata, uh, Mars explains that real uh, surrender comes only when you overcome the scripture, go beyond, are willing to go beyond scripture. That is real Sharanagati. That's how it's understood. Sarva Dharmam. All duties in the scripture, anywhere else. Tyaga. And then Aham Sarvasya. Aham? Tvam Sarva Papibya. Aham Tvam Sarva Papibya. Yes. Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, actually, it is very difficult uh, because in the in the in the mundane world, so much of imitation is there. So if you say only scripture, then is also problem, and then only after you say that you know there is also problem because there are so much imitation sometimes. So you know. Means uh, people may, some people like, you know, they say spiritual master, they will say, uh, they, they are like you know, people who are not qualified. Then that they say that, okay, whatever I say, then that is uh, uh, what you can say, scripture. So uh, even uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he is saying Rai Ramananda, in that also he is saying that you say everything from the scripture. So there, because of the considering the people, how they use it actually in this world. Because those who are already in the transcendental plane, for them, uh, this scripture has no meaning actually, because they already transcended everything. But in the mundane world, Maharaj, if, uh, you know, there are so much imitation, then it is very difficult, you know, uh, to make some, you know, what you can say, discrimination. Yes. So spiritual life is difficult. It is not a, it is not a simple subject matter. 
and not a simple subject matter. Uh, I have to be very careful and very intelligent, very thoughtful and very sincere. Somehow, those who are sincere, they will find their spiritual teacher, their spiritual master. They will get the proper direction. That's a very fortunate position. Uh, that Ado Shraddha. And Shraddha means in the, in the spiritual teacher, faith in the spiritual teacher. Who comes to that position? They already have some sukriti, some merit that has allowed them to come to that position. Not everyone can come there. And like you say, some will come to certain positions and look for a spiritual master and then be cheated because that person is not qualified. But even, even then, if we are sincere, we will be able to see, well, oh, I made uh, a mistake. Huh? This is not where I should be. I'm not getting the fulfillment that I was looking for. I'm not getting that connection possible. So at each, at each step, our heart has to be there. Huh? Our heart has to be there making those decisions, yes or no. But at, at a certain point, like I said, by our own good fortune, we will be able to put our trust in Guru Dave and feel ourselves being uh, being directed in the proper way at every step. Uh, things will, all the scales of, of darkness and ignorance will fall from our eyes under the proper direction of Guru Dave. Krishna will arrange. There's also, we must not forget that there is an intelligence there behind everything. Uh, Krishna knows what we want and what we need. And he is directing us from within our heart, Paramatma. So yes, spiritual life requires a lot of faith, but then we have two choices. Either we put faith in Guru Dev or we put faith in ourselves. Now, if you think you're doing a good job of figuring things out for yourself, Okay, <laughs> go on in that way. But if you think you've done a miserable job in your own life, as far as spiritual uh, development is concerned, and then we must put our faith in Guru Dave. We will try, experiment. It's a risk, no doubt. But as we say, no risk, no gain. Uh, we can make enormous progress if we find the proper person or the proper qualified properly qualified person and we will have to trust our own hearts to see that what my heart tells me yes that is correct uh, i made a proper choice proper decision And uh, Gita also tells us it's not so much a, a random thing. At every step, we should be able to see, even with our own senses, that we are making progress. And not a matter of random guesswork, or whatever. We will feel ourselves making progress and we'll see ourselves making progress. <clears throat> One time you told that a way to gauge if we're making Tomorrow progress some fortune is necessary. Service is coming. Huh? Some fortune is necessary. Security. Sukriti, fortune means luck. Sukriti. A Sukriti. Yes, Maharaj, like some, the, the Bhagya is being considered, uh, as you know, also important, uh, just not 
for the because you can also give me merciful and uh, like to give some jiva because how even that uh, supruti is coming to that person like that may be also the grace of the lord yes like uh, means how can he connect to even the supruti like yeah. bhagyo brahmando bhramite bhramite it is told bhagyo is there maras yeah. so is that uh, also has to do with uh, something the individuals merit or something grace is there devotee always feels he is unworthy of whatever comes so he's always saying it is grace or mercy and krishna is by is automatically very kind to all living entities <clears throat> Um, a matter of the heart these things are a matter of the heart heart can understand what the mind can't figure out <laughs> the mind will never know what the heart knows I was going to say I, I remember when Krishna Keshava was in search of something and he was he was seeking out um something he wasn't sure what it was and he he and he came upon I mean Chris you can tell your story but I'm just talking about from my perspective as his mother <laughs> obviously um and he got introduced to Krishna consciousness through another group and he was there for a while until he met you maharaj and i'm going to cry hare <laughs> krishna you're so sweet and he felt you were you were pure you were a direct disciple to prabhupad and he felt that was the place for him yeah <laughs> oh. <laughs> and i thought that was magnificent for him to feel that way and that's when he moved in with you <laughs> so i i was um you know very touched by the way he went about trying to figure this life out for himself and and how he made his choices and what led him to you so yeah Thank it's you. his his story to tell but from his mother's perspective that's that's how i i saw it and i was very happy that he made the choices he did uh to live the life that he's choosing so hi rivo rivo dhanyawad to risha hi didi yes they are both very saintly persons Therese and Krishna Keshava. She thought she automatically became involved in so many services just because of her son and doing all these things. She automatically did it herself. Oh, become very nice. Yes, these are like I say. I don't know. Uh, mental, mentally, we don't know <laughs> why these things happen, but heartfully, we can understand. We feel everything, and we understand everything from our heart. It seems otherwise. It seems miraculous to me. Everything, how things happen, why things happen, which persons they happen with, these are all miracles <laughs> to me. Mm -hmm. Somehow we come in contact with one another, and we go on and we progress in our lives. Uh, each person that is here, I did not plan to meet any of you, <laughs> <laughs> but you're here in my life. I never, I would always think, I never planned to meet you, Paul. But I never even thought of meeting such a person in my entire life. I didn't know what was going on, actually, or what was happening. 
or how it would happen. Nothing. But it happened. Uh, and we think it is only by the grace of God that these things have occurred because we didn't plan it. Mm -hmm. We don't plan any of it. Mm -hmm. Of course not. In fact, if we had planned it, it would have been terrible. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have made a mess of it. <laughs> Maharaj, that's what we would have done. Yes, Maharaj. Once somebody asked you, Maharaj, how we know a sadhu or something like that. Uh -huh. So he told that uh, in that in that uh, sense we are helpless. He told because uh, uh, because we we have to be qualified. Even know that uh, what is the quality of sadhu, or even to know with the sadhu. So in that case, we need help from the above. Yes. Yeah. The point is, we are not in control. We are not the controllers. We are not the planners. Things don't happen because we plan it to be this way or that way. Uh -huh. We're just kind of floating along <laughs> and things are happening. And we hope that they're they're beneficial for us spiritually and uh, whatever way they can they can help us. Humbly praying to, to the Lord. Thank you, my Lord, for whatever you have given. Uh, I recognize that you are the controller. You are the Lord. And I am simply your servant. And also to see the love by which Krishna blesses us, huh? gives us his mercy. <laughs> it's all meant for our benefit, no matter what happens. That's our nagati. <clears throat> Maharaj? Yes. Please may I ask a question? It won't take very long. Okay. Um, some of the things that we've been talking about and the honesty from our hearts and intention is so much so much uh, essential. But uh, I'm a musician and very often I have very much difficulty, believe it or not, mathematically. If I could see things in colour and I could see things on a musical scale. But whatever instrument you play, what is most beneficial is that you have a conductor, a conductor to help you interpret the manuscript which is in front of you. And should the manuscript that has just been presented in front of you uh, is your life plan or and the day to day activities. And that's where the Hegel notion about the concepts and things. So, Maharaj, the, the levels, just like you see a musical scale, a stable five eight notes, they can be moved up, up, up down, up, up, whatever. But that that whole, and those, they all, if, they, if the notes run concurrently, so in other words, that makes a chord, you play all those notes in one succession at any one opportunity. I'm sorry, I may be a little bit complex about this, but I think you may get, you will say, most people will get the concept of what I mean, but that air, uh, Whilst, whilst one is the conductor of one's own life with all the symphony of instruments, the 180 instruments in front of you, that are the skills, intellectual abilities, uh, cultural influences, whatever life experiences, and given the time of one's preceptivity to the intellectual and I was going to say, if one is fortunate enough, spiritual and philosophical uh, filtration of such experiences day by day, that if one is very fortunate, most essentially, that the cognizance of oneself as making the decisions with regard to what instruments you are even perceiving, baby steps, as Christian Kavi says that so many times so wonderfully, and as you have mentioned so many times as well, uh, that baby steps 
Uh, and but it is it is sorry, my I'm being it's kind of like looking at a rainbow. And if you just suddenly see a rainbow and you see all the parts and all the various this, that, and the other of your own as you take in a breath, and there's your life in front of you. And ooh, but, but it's a flash. Um and uh the conductor of it all, if one has had the grace and mercy to have had some kind of, first of all, realization of one's own atma and then paratma, but then by the grace and mercy of, I was going to say, the incredible, and, and, and you see, this is the thing that is most incredible, is that for all the levels of one's own personal awareness of one's own self in the world, and then one's intellectual ability, and spiritual ability and guidance through Maharaj. Oh, wow, how high is that from where one starts off with? It's just so incredible. But it still is a, like, I mean, one's knowledge of the depths of Hegel, for example, or some other, of, or, 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 or Nietzsche and that kind of notions and so on. Poetry in, 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 in a stanza. And say as much as an encyclopedia of nonsense. Um, and so this is why it is so essential that the eternal, the infinite meets the finite, sorry, the finite meets the infinite through the instruction and guidance of Guru. Otherwise, it's otherwise it's just simply as you had said so much. Eh, Krishna is the supreme enjoyer, supreme, and it is, it is only by that incredible, how should I say, nuclear, um, and it goes from nuclear, from infinitesimal, mic microcosmic to macrocosmic, um, fractal, uh, cosmic awareness, moment to moment, as one holds one breath and says, but I don't take another breath. That's the end of that. But then as all of the, the knowledge that may one have of the more higher notions of the locus and so on, that uh, well, really, I, I was, but that's for another discussion at another time. I thank you so much, my right. <laughs> I am humbled by, by, by everything that I've read that you have, uh, I, but to, to have your life, Maharaj, I really, really humbled by the word, Maharaj. I think Govinda Maharaj once said it very in a very nice way, a very simple way. He said, uh, you know, uh, you, can, you can reach down and touch an ant. Ant doesn't know what's happening to it. <laughs> That somebody can he knows somebody is touching it, but he doesn't know what's where it came from, how it happened. We're like that. We're living in a certain dimension, huh? We have our and we see that dimension, that whole that dimension is our whole world for us. But there are other dimensions beyond that. Hmm? And that dimension, the infinite, is can come down to us at any time and touch us. It can crush us. <laughs> Anything. Right. And we don't know how that happened or where that happened. That, that's how our lives go on. We really are just a little ant crawling on a, 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 a piece of dust. Uh, in the universe, this earth is just a piece of dust, the size of a dust particle. And we are crawling on it. And the infinite can come and do anything he wants. That dimension is always there beyond the three dimensions that we can see. Yes. Anyhow, that's why important to, to understand these things and to realize these things because that helps us to understand more what surrender means. Huh? That we don't have to rely on our own selves all the time. Certain obligations, of course, and responsibilities we have. But that's not uh, the ultimate thing. 
Who is that? Surrender Kumar? Yeah. Surrender Kumar. How do you blow up? We'll, we haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. How are you? I'm. Uh, we're okay. How are you doing? Good, good. My mom has not been well, so I've been really busy with her. Okay. All right. She's going through a lot of uh, ailments, so uh, on the weekend, I had a chance to come in today, and I wanted to see you both as I enjoy watching you guys and listening. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us. We thank wish you, you well. I wish your mom well. I appreciate it. Thank you. John Tamaraj, do you have anything? else you would like to share with us in advice <laughs> Maharaj, i was happy to hear, hear you maharaj <laughs> Are you good? Uh, all right my dandavas my dandavas my humble dandavats to you all. Please be well. Stay safe. Be happily engaged in Krishna consciousness service. My love to you. <laughs>